I'm sure you are all very excited, as I am, uh, about the fact that the White Sox are in camp. We are just a few days away from seeing our first game action of the year, which is very exciting. Uh, we still have not gotten that one more starting pitcher, and I'm beginning to lose hope on it. Um, I guess we'll see what happens. Where is Jake Odorizzi going to go? It's unreal that he hasn't signed yet, and nobody has really come out as a strong suitor so far. But uh, I say, hey, just make it happen. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, we have the cap space by a lot, uh, but we don't have the depth at starting pitcher. That's all I'll say in this moment. Um, moving forward, I'm going to start doing two episodes a week, two, uh, two videos a week. Uh, one of them will be a White Sox news-oriented video, and the other will be something fun, either a feature type of uh, video or interaction with you guys answering your questions or responding to the answers that you've given me. You guys have given a lot, a lot of great answers to the questions I asked, and I think we're going to start getting to those really quickly, possibly by next week. I want to take a quick moment before we jump into the main content of this video and give a shout out to a new member of the community, somebody that's been uh, chatting long, commenting long. Is whenever we talk about Cuban players, and of course, as White Sox fans, uh, Cuban players come up pretty often, and that is Phil Selig. He is a Canadian citizen who's a big fan of Cuban baseball, so he's able to go down to Cuba as he's done many times and really be part of the baseball scene down there. And it's really just kind of fascinating how close he's been able to get to the action. He actually has a short film about his experience. And this short film is actually screened at Cooperstown. So that's pretty cool. He was going down to Cuba several years ago and put this together. And, and you will see some familiar names. Jose Abreu is still playing in Cuba at the time. Uh, you'll actually see a little bit of Luis Robert and Joan Moncada comes up. And definitely check out his short film. The link is in the description. Like, comment, and subscribe on it. As a baseball nerd, I was doing what anybody would do on a Saturday night, which is scrolling through Cot's baseball contracts. Uh, why? Because I couldn't imagine what it would be like to spend a quarter of a billion dollars on one year of salary. And that's, of course, what the LA Dodgers are doing right now. And something jumped out at me. It caught my eye as I looked all the way over on the left side. David Price, first round pick. Trevor Bauer, first round pick. Clayton Kershaw, AJ Pollock, Corey Seager, Walker Bueller, of course. This team has a lot of first round picks that are on the 40 man roster. And it made me wonder, I wonder what team has the most first round picks that are on the 40 man roster right now. So that's what I decided to set out and do for this video. Find out which team has the most first round picks on its roster and I'll do a top five. Uh, but you know, of course this doesn't equal success. There's lots of first round picks as we know uh, <laughs> who have gone bust. And of course there's lots of great deep picks uh, maybe Mark Burley comes to mind, who end up being some of the best people in the history of your franchise. So I will give a top five countdown for the teams that have the most first round picks on their 40 man roster. Now think about it for a second before we dive into it. Will this be a rebuilding team, a team that maybe they're at the point of contention so they've been able to gather first round picks over several years and some of those guys are being called up, some of the younger guys are being added to the 40 man roster. Uh, a team that's maybe on the brink of being competitive, or is it going to be a team like the Dodgers that, because we're going historical, we're not talking about homegrown first round picks, we're just talking about first round picks ever. Um, is it going to be a team like the Yankees or the Dodgers that big name guys go out there and they can hire them, just uh, pay for them to come and join their team? Will it be one of them? I will help and give a hint that it won't be a team that has recently gone into rebuilding mode. So what's the requirement? When does a team have to add one of their prospects to their 40-man roster? Well, if they come up and play on the big league squad, of course they are in. Even doesn't matter how old they are, how long they've been in the organization, if they're playing in the big leagues, they are on the 40-man and the 26-man roster. Um, otherwise, a team that has had a minor leaguer for five years in the minor leagues, they have to add them to the 40-man roster or they could be at risk of being picked up by some other team in the Rule 5 draft. Now, it's possible to have a guy in your system that's been with you for six or more years, first-round pick that hasn't really panned out, obviously. Uh, keep them off the 40-man roster if you think nobody else is going to pick them. One other stipulation. There's a little bit of a scoring here. I can't just say count the number of guys because there is a sandwich round, especially going back through the years. There's different versions of these competitive balance picks, sandwich picks, compensation picks. If uh, one of your top players signed elsewhere and you offer to bring them back, qualifying offer style, lots of ins and outs. So there's a half point for guys that are taken between rounds one and two because 
they're not paid like a first rounder, but they're definitely not, not paid like a second rounder either. So that's how the scoring is going to work here. And we should start out the, as easy as possible by showing the team. And I'm not going to go through the entire league, but just the top five. But I also wanted to show the team that was at the bottom of this list, uh, which is an interesting one because you might think a team that has traded off some of its top players lately, they'll have a lot of number one picks on their team. And and they really don't. And that is our interdivision rivals, Cleveland. They come in with a score of just three and a half. And that reason is because they have 2014 pick Bradley Zimmer, 2015 pick Josh Naylor, 2015 sandwich round pick Tristan McKenzie. So there's the one half point. And then 2016 pick Cal Quantrill. So that gives the Cleveland Indians a score of just three and a half. They are by far at the bottom of this list. And the really interesting thing is that they wouldn't have Naylor or McKenzie if they hadn't done the Mike Clevenger trade. So it'd be really easy and honestly even kind of fun to go into the background of each and every single one of these players. Not gonna do that, this video would be way too long. But if a team has multiple first round picks in the same round, probably because they got some people in the trade, I'll point that out to, to explain why there are multiple people for a single round. The first team I'll talk about is the Washington Nationals. Of course, it all starts with Mr. National himself, Ryan Zimmerman in 2005, fourth overall selection. 2006, First round pick is Max Scherzer. Obviously, he didn't start out with the Nationals, but he's with them now. Steven Strasburg is a first round first pick, a 1-1, one of the few on this list, 2009. Joe Ross in 2011. Eric Fetty in 2014. And we have another 2014 first rounder in Trey Turner, which I didn't realize that Trey Turner didn't start out with the Nationals. He was actually a Padre at first, but he was part of the Will Myers trade, which certainly worked out very well for the Nationals. And of course, another 2014 pick, Kyle Schwarber, was recently signed from the Cubs as a free agent. He was a number four overall selection. In 2016, Carter Keboom joined the team at a late round 28th overall pick, and Seth Romero joined in 2017. In fourth place on the list is the Red Sox. Their history starts back in 2006 with Adam Ottaveno, who was picked very late in the first round, 30th overall. 2009, Garrett Richards. A 2010 first round pick, Chris Sale from the White Sox, eventually was part of a somewhat notable trade that went to Boston. Matt Barnes in 2011. Kevin Pawlicki in 2012. Hunter Renfro went around baseball a little bit. Drafted by Kansas City. Of course, we know him with the Padres and Rays. Signed with Boston just this year. Is a 2013 pick along with Christian Arroyo, who also saw his share of teams being drafted at first by the Giants, but seeing time with the Rays in Cleveland as well. 2014 saw Michael Chavez. 2016, Jay Grome, and another 2016 pick, Hudson Potts, who was picked by the Padres, and he was traded just last August in the Mitch Moreland trade. And 2017's pick, Tanner Hawk. Just barely passing the Red Sox and Nationals to claim third place is the Cincinnati Reds. On their current 40-man roster is Mike Moustakis, who was a second overall pick in 2007. Another veteran that comes from 2007 is Sean Doolittle. The 2008 draft yielded them Wade Miley. Nick Castellanos came from 2010. Sonny Gray came out of the 2011 draft. 2012 produced Lucas Sims, who was drafted by the Braves before being traded over in the Adam Duvall deal. And that same year, the Reds drafted Jesse Winker and a sandwich round pick, the 49th overall selection, which is the lowest overall pick of anybody that you'll see on this list. 2013 brought Michael Lorenzen in. 2014 produced Jeff Hoffman, who was drafted by the Jays, but traded to the Rockies and then made his way to the Reds. And also Alex Blandino. 2015 produced Tyler Stevenson and Kyle Holder, who was drafted by the Yankees and also spent some time with the Phillies. And the 2016 draft brought second overall pick Nick Senzel to Cincinnati. Claiming the second spot is the Atlanta Braves. And this really shows you basically where they are. They're a team that was rebuilding a while ago. They banked a lot of young talent. Those guys are coming up. The guys behind them are starting to get better and better. To, and, and need to be added to that 40-man roster. Our most veteran player is Tyler Matzek. New addition to the Braves, Travis Denard, was brought in in 2007. Luke Jackson was drafted in 2010. 2012, welcome Max Freed, seventh overall pick. Philip Irvin was drafted in 2013. Now, this is funny because 2014 produced three first-round draft picks that are on the Braves' 40-man roster, but the Braves actually didn't draft any of them. Alex Jackson, who was drafted by Seattle and later traded. Sean Newcomb, who was drafted by the Angels and then traded with Eric Abar in the Andrelton Simmons trade. And Tuki Toussaint, 
who was drafted by the Diamondbacks. I never knew he was with the Diamondbacks. I thought he was a lifelong brave, but he was traded for Phil Gosselin. Oh, speaking of trades that worked out well for Atlanta, 2015 is when Dansby Swanson was drafted by the Diamondbacks. And of course he came over in that really terrible Shelby Miller trade. There was a lot of players going back and forth, but really it was a one-sided trade almost immediately as Shelby Miller did not pan out at all in Arizona and Atlanta just got to enjoy all the prospects they picked up. Also in 2015 is when they grabbed Mike Soraka as the 28th overall pick and Austin Riley in a sandwich round 41st overall pick. Ian Anderson is on the 40 man from the 2016 draft and Kyle Wright from the 2017 draft. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, who do you think it is? Okay, now I swear, I swear I did not know this was going to be the answer when I began this quest. But indeed, and I went over this many times to see if I was wrong, see if I was mistaken somewhere. By the way, all the credit and also the blame, if anything's wrong, goes to COTS Baseball Contracts, a baseball prospectus, an awesome, awesome uh, resource that I use all the time. Drum roll, please. And the White Sox have the most first round draft picks on the 40-man roster. And again, that does not equal success. But it's just, it's really interesting. And you'll see we got to this point in a couple of different ways. Our most veteran player on this team is Lance Lynn, who was a sandwich round pick. 39th overall in 2008. 2010 was Yasmani Grandal. 2012 was Lucas Giolito. As you see, so far we have three first rounders on this team and the White Sox haven't drafted any of them. Giolito came over in the trade with the Nationals, of course. Here's our first homegrown talent. Tim Anderson, 17th overall pick in 2013. Here's something very interesting. Again, something is weird about 2014. There are so many people on this list from the year 2014. Carlos Rodon, third overall pick by the White Sox, and another first rounder in 2014 was Michael Kopech. That's just so wild to me because it feels like Rodon has been a veteran that's been around forever, and Michael Kopech is this young rookie. Uh, and, and it's true that Kopech is still quite a bit younger than Rodon, but they've both been in professional baseball for the same amount of time. 2016 ended up being a nice draft year for the White Sox. We got Zach Collins as the 10th overall pick. Blake Rutherford was the 18th overall pick. Now he was drafted by the Yankees, but came over in that David Robertson, Todd Frazier trade. And Zach Birdie was picked up by the White Sox, the 26th overall pick. 2017 is when the White Sox drafted Jake Berger. 2018 is Nick Madrigal, fourth overall pick. And in 2020, obviously the youngest person on this entire list, Garrett Crochet, uh, the first person from the 2020 draft class to make his major league debut. And obviously he was quite ready to go. A bit random to take a look at teams this way, but I always love seeing how teams are constructed. And I thought you might find this interesting as well. I want to always keep this community where we are interacting and discussing and sharing ideas and uh, hopefully celebrating victories together. As a final note on this one, the standings could change a little bit here because Jake Odorizzi was a first round pick by the Milwaukee Brewers once upon a time. So so hopefully the White Sox can expand our lead in this category. Now, if you enjoyed this, let me know because I could do another video very similar to this talking about what team has the most international signees. I think that's interesting as well. You would think the White Sox would do fairly well in that race as the White Sox have not only a lot of Cuban born players, but international free agents that have signed with us as well that are actively on the major league roster. But there might be some surprises on the way. I really didn't think Cleveland was gonna be at the very bottom of this list. Oh, and I do have the full rankings in the description below. Feel free to drop me a comment or a question on any topic White Sox related whatsoever. I will be back very soon with a White Sox news update looking at what's going on in spring training. And this is gonna be a fun year and I'll be along for the full ride. I'm thinking about doing some live events as well. But as always, play ball and go Sox.